2017 has been a year of election in some African countries, and one common trend is political opposition. In Guinea, the opposition has taken to anti-government protests, calling for local elections, which have not taken place since 2005. They are also criticizing corruption and high cost of living. Here's the story. Hundreds of thousands of protesters take to the streets in Guinea's capital, Conakry, to demand better governance and that the ruling leadership respects political accords signed with the opposition on holding long-delayed local elections. Led by a coalition of opposition parties, protesters waved placards with slogans reading, Don't touch my constitution, repair our roads, and Alpha Conde, seven years of poor governance. Opposition members also say they want to protest alleged corruption and economic mismanagement by the government of President Alpha Conde. This has been a massive success. The presence of all these people says a lot, meaning that we are all fed up of this government. They support the opposition in its legitimate quest to organize local elections, to conduct investigations, to bring an end to impunity, and identify all those behind the crimes committed during the peaceful protest by the opposition. Protesters also called out President Conde following suspicions that he might want to amend Guinea's current constitution that would allow him run for a third term in office. In 2015, Conde won a second five-year term and dismissed opposition claims of fraud and vote again. Conde had offered to include Diallo's allies in a government of national unity, but analysts warned that lingering tension between the government and the opposition could stoke more unrest in the country. The protests also come following the arrest of reggae artist and activist Eli Kamano on July the 17th for going on a banned protest, and fellow reggae artist Takana Zion, who was planning an anti-government festival. Kamano had been a vocal critic of Conde and his government. I condemn bad governance. I condemn the lack of electricity. We have been living in the dark in the last seven years because of lack of electricity. After seven or eight years of this regime, we have to ask questions in which direction is this government taking us. I condemn the fact that Guinean teachers and professors are the worst paid in the region. Guinea is Africa's largest producer of bauxite, raw material for aluminum, and also has massive deposits of iron ore and other minerals. But lack of electricity means mining projects have long been forced to rely on costly generators. Despite vast mineral wealth, most Guineans live in poverty, and President Conde has been blamed for a stagnant economy. You're watching Africa 54, I'm Esther Gidu Yort. Senegal's tax scene has been slow to get off the ground for lack of qualified coders, but a locally run company is trying to change that while also helping young people find jobs. Sophia Christensen has that story from Dakar. Local tech startups are tackling day-to-day -day conveniences in Dakar. Firefly, a digital advertising company, places TV screens in public buses, but has struggled to find qualified web and mobile app developers in Senegal. They are trained in technologies we do not work with. For example, all engineering schools in Dakar work in Java. We work mostly with PHP and Python, with new front-end technologies like Bootstrap. These are not things they learn in school. Until recently, that is. This is Volcano. Students learn web development, digital marketing, or graphic design. At the end of the one-month training program, they will spend two months interning with the local company. The classes are free. Volcano is supported by companies like Firefly in exchange for interns. At least 15 of those interns have landed full-time contracts. CEO Abdul Khadro Diallo initially set up Volcano to provide tech services to local entrepreneurs. The training program was launched later when he realized none of his interns were sufficiently qualified. Here, young people are not encouraged to be interested in these skills. Most schools remain too classical. The training is too classical. You see schools where in five years there is no decent practical training, in my opinion. There are efforts to change that. At this coding workshop in the northern city of Sangui, high school students are introduced to coding and web development. 
The next Einstein Forum's Africa Science Week is held in 13 African countries to promote interest in STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. For me, the problem lies in the content of university courses because you can start by teaching HTML, but then you evolve and teach HTML5. For me, we must simply update everything. Volcano has registered over 14 functioning startups in Dakar, all of which operate through websites and mobile applications. If you are trained in technology, you can start up maybe sitting right here in this room. Sophia Christensen for VOA News, Dakar. And that's our show for today. Be sure to watch Africa 54 on the VOA website at voaafrica.com. It's your one-stop shop for all the biggest news from Africa and around the world. The clock as it happens. I'm Esther Gidder-Ewart in Washington. Chamberlain has our last word from Lagos. We look forward, as always, to bringing you another show next week. Our channels has got you covered on the web for local news, sports, health and more. I'm Chamberlain Oso. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.